Hello everyone and welcome back to A Dancer's Mindset with myself, Isabella. But I'm not alone today, guys. We're joined by Mrs. Honkinet. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. We're so excited. Keep dancing. Keep dancing. Motto, motto of the life. Just keep dancing. <laughs> <laughs> guys, welcome back. She is in a funny mood mood today. We've got Subi here today. Now today we're going to be talking about auditions because it is audition season. It has, yes, the time has come where we must audition for the schools, the companies, wherever it is we want to go. So we'll be discussing lots of things like how to approach these auditions because, you know, a lot of nerves circle around the auditions as well as how best to approach it. And then also dealing with maybe rejection that you may get at this stage. And it's not necessarily a failing. It's just kind of a little fall on the journey. Um, so, Suvi, tell us a little bit more about, um, let's start with the audition experiences that you've had. Because obviously we met when we went to Vaganova. I yes. actually don't even know, I don't know if I know this. How did you audition for Vaganova? I, um, my teacher in Finland was um, a graduate of the school herself, and she really believed in the method, and she felt that I was a student with potential and that I should audition. So I think she contacted um, people that she knew from the school and organized that I can go and take class. Uh, so one lovely morning, I took a a very early ferry from Helsinki or not from Helsinki. I took it from some city in, in close. I thought to you said ferry border. then. It was a, it was a ferry. Yeah. Because uh, no, back I thought you then, said ferry. Oh, like a ferry. ferry. <laughs> I want a ferry. <laughs> I took a very I early I ferry. An early ferry. <laughs> oh, I wish it was actually quite horrific, but that's not the point of this video. Yeah. Um, anyway, I made my way to St. Petersburg and I was so nervous, um, but I took a class with um, Irina Sitnikova. Oh, did you, actually? I did, yeah. And her students were amazing, and I was just like, well, okay. <laughs> um, and then I thought, I mean, it was the first time dancing on a rake stage. So yeah. it, it was. It just felt awful, the whole class. Um, but yeah, then after that, she didn't say a word to me. Um, I was just like, okay, I guess I didn't get in. And then somebody came to me and was like, can we have your passport, please? And I was like, why? To, to send you yeah. the invitation. And I was like, oh. So that's how I, that's how I auditioned. That yeah. sounds, so, that, that's so typical. Um, <laughs> because I had a very similar experience with Vaganova. Um, basically, I did as well. I knew people who, or yeah. my Russian coach here, knew people there. And so I managed to get a private audition. Mm -hmm. And then um, basically I took class with Marina Vasilieva. So I took class with the year that I was age-wise supposed to be in. Right. But obviously like I was held back a year because they were like, not good enough, muscles too soft. So, um, <laughs> but like you, the class was just like a nightmare because it yeah. was raked. I was thinking, wow, Christina Chapran's back is extremely muscly. Um, <laughs> and her, her feet are extremely pointed. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, the muscles are bulging from these girls. Um, mine are, where are they? <laughs> you know, um, managed to get through, but like no one said anything. Alt and I came in yeah. for like five minutes and then left. Yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah. I guess I didn't get it. Like I thought exactly the same as you. And yeah. then later they were like, come to office. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so obviously with we went down in that regard, the private audition route. For me, yeah. the main auditions where it's been like a mass amount of people have mm -hmm. been when I was auditioning for the Royal Ballet School. Mm -hmm. And when I was auditioning for companies later, like outside of Russia, yeah. when I was, you know, um, deliberating whether to leave and go somewhere else. Um, what's your experience with mass auditions? Have you done Ooh. those before? I have actually not done a single one. I oh, have, wow. Yeah, I've, 
I haven't done that many auditions in general, but the ones that I have done have been private auditions. But um, I do have, in a way, I have experience of them because uh, I do remember at FMB there was, they held those auditions every year. And a lot of my friends took part in, in like big, big auditions. Uh, so I kind of, in that way, know the drill. Um, yeah. I, what I feel from it is that like, it's quite hard to um, stand out in such a big crowd. It can be really easy to just kind of get lost in there, Mm. in my opinion. Um, Totally. Or at least that's what I've kind of heard, that you often just aren't seen. uh, No. There's just so many people. And um, so in that way, I guess private auditions, they're in a way more stressful because then all eyes are on you. And not just, like, the eyes of whoever comes to watch class, but also, like, all the other company members are, like, ooh, this person is auditioning. So it's very, like, zoomed in on you. But at least you're seen. At least the focus is on you. Um, The difficult thing is, mm. the difficult thing is for now, like, I as well think if you can get a private audition, do that. Yeah. Because fundamentally... Yes, it's more difficult. Yes, all eyes are on you. But you also know that that place that you're, you know, probably flying to and spending money on going to visit actually wants to see you. Yeah. Because so many times we we spend so much money. Sometimes we have to pay to register for the audition itself. I mean, that's happening more and more and more. Yeah. Um, And you go and you may be cut after like 10 minutes. Yeah, you may be cut after the bar or, yeah. So, so yeah, I flew to um, Munich once and this was like post, post Russia when I was like experimenting, looking around yeah. and I got cut after bar because, what? yeah, after 10 minutes because, what? yeah, I didn't even get to do the center because I was like way, way on the side. Oh like oh well no probably probably tall probably but it's like it was in those situations that I was like well I know I don't have an issue with my ability so it's like you shouldn't have accepted me here in the first place if you knew that I was too tall or I just wasn't what you're looking for at this moment in time yeah but they unfortunately Um, do that all the time right they accept you and they're like you're too short and you're like well my height was on the cv (laughs) But anyway, continue. Yeah, right. And it was pretty bad at the time because the director was on his phone like most of the time whilst I was on the bar. So I didn't even feel like I was given the attention. And so I left kind of mad, like just kind of angry at the situation because I was like, well, I've spent so much money and time. And uh, when you're at that age as well, money is not like um, like something that you can just throw away. So it was it was like one of the only experiences of mass auditions for me and it kind of totally Mm. ruined it again I was just like this is not worth it so Mm. I would say the the great thing that's come up at the moment is things like grand audition yeah and obviously that's for companies but it's like well that makes more sense to do a larger group audition like that and it's such a great thing because number one you're seeing number two you're performing so even if everything goes wrong like you're getting a good um, performance opportunity. Um, yeah, exactly. And also like 10 companies or however many are seeing you. Are there, so the yeah. chances of some of you getting something out of it are also mm-hmm. a lot greater. Um, yeah, and also I believe that you do have to apply for it. So, mm. right, so by being accepted, you kind of know that, well, they want to look at you or you're going to be looked at. It's not like... I think you can do the whole class. Like, you don't get cut after bar. No one gets cut after bar, I think. I don't. Yeah, I I don't think so. I mean, I don't know the whole thing. Me neither, but but I've heard very good things about it. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed um, Chloe Revelion from from Dutch National, and she she did that, and she, like, she got, like, every company, (laughs) which was so... Yeah. I mean, if you also just want a confidence boost, that's, like... Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, but when, let's talk about, because obviously a lot of people don't have a choice and a lot of people have to do those mass 
mm-hmm. mass auditions and yes it can be nerve-wracking but I would just say the only the only real thing that we can do in those situations mm. is just try our best and yeah. I would say as well, because can, you can get very caught up in your own head looking at other people in the room thinking, Definitely. oh, they're better than me. They're going to get it. I don't know why I'm here. Like, why have I even come? There's so many people better than me. Yeah. Um, you never know what someone's looking for and you're there because you have something to offer. And so yeah. for me, and it's and it, it's an effort to have this mindset, but mm-hmm. I would try to obviously most of the time focus completely on myself and not really bother looking at anyone else. But if I did see someone who was good, I just make a little mental note to myself being like, Oh, they're great. Like they're amazing. I'm going to try my best rather than seeing it as a negative, you know? Definitely. I think, I think mental preparation is like just as, just as important as working on your technique and, and all that. And I think it's also good to maybe dissect Like, why do you feel nervous and what is making you so um, stressed about it? Because I I find that often with auditions, the most nerve wracking thing is just the fact of the unknown, that it's just the whole situation is everything is unknown about it. You don't know what kind of class it's going to be. You don't know who else is going to be there. You don't know this and that. And it's like everything about it is new and stressful and it's a lot of you know, um, what's that word in English? Out Well, <laughs> for I don't know what you just said. That was just a noise. <laughs> oh my gosh. Arasuke. Arasuke. Um, but just like a lot of new information, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's the unknown if, of, I don't know if I'm going to get this job. Are they going to like me? All of that is just, you're just stressing about the things that you can't control, basically. So I think it's important to focus on the things that you can control, which are just very basic, simple things. Get a good night of sleep, eat well, you know. um, You warm up. Yeah, good warm up. um, You know, put a leotard that maybe is not just the basic black leotard, maybe something a little color to to help you pop out a bit. And and then just when the class starts, I think it's, it's also like, important to just sort of I don't know somehow like surrender to it like relax into it it's just it's just a class if you go don't get this job your life is not going to end in a way kind of just let yourself um it's maybe too hard to enjoy it (laughs) but yeah but kind of um just say to yourself this is just a class I've done a class a million times you know yeah and it's an experience and yeah. You have something to learn from it anyway. Yeah. Exactly. And like, it's also an experience that you're growing from. Even if, yeah. like, even if it goes not perfectly, you're growing, yeah. you're learning. And I think a constant reminder to myself when I'm a bit uncomfortable and I'm a bit nervous and I, it's, I'm just constantly trying to remind myself, like, okay. I'm uncomfortable, yes, because this is changed. This is different. I have less mm. control over the situation. Um, but it means that I'm about to grow as a person. Like I'm yeah. about to get better um, because exactly. I'll go into the next one a little bit more prepared to handle the unknown, you know. Yeah. Um, because like you said, yeah, it's the unknown. And as dancers, we're so mm, sort of, attracted to the idea of being perfect all the time Mm -hmm. so when you're in an atmosphere where it's like completely different you don't know what's going to happen you have no control that the fear it's the fear of not being perfect I think because you don't you know know as much and relinquishing that control yeah and just also trusting yourself a little bit like I can do this class I can I can handle this you know yeah and I'm gonna enjoy the experience (laughs) yeah and then one thought I had about what you said about like comparing yourself watching others and being like oh my gosh she's so good and Mm. and all that stuff it's I found that many times like especially in bar it's it's not always easy to tell just by somebody's bar work (laughs) your bar is just a part of the class and it's you can't necessarily see how somebody's uh, dynamic and the way of moving is, you know, 
just by judging the bar. So I think even if you get cut after bar, you can, you, that's like, well, they didn't really see me. So that's annoying, but also it doesn't mean you're bad. Um, no, that will literally also, be, that will literally be down to very superficial things, really. Very superficial, either something super like very superficial or just nobody looking at you. That's yeah. And it's both are annoying, obviously, but they have nothing to do with your talent. So just don't take it personally. But also like, like you said, just focus on yourself, really try to make an effort not to look at others, really like concrete things, like follow your fingers in your movements, look at your, you know, surroundings. Don't focus on other people's bodies and abilities. Yeah. And perform. Yes. As well. Yeah. Yes. One thing as well I've been thinking about um, mm -hmm. recently is the idea of um, practicing negative visualization. Have you heard of this? Oh, I have not. Negative visualization. Oh. Right. So obviously we always talk about visualizing what you yes. want, visualizing the good things, which is all great. Um, but sometimes, you know, things go wrong and we're less equipped to deal with it. Handle so it. the idea of negative visualization mm -hmm. and practicing that is kind of like literally imagining the worst thing that could happen right. and sort of when you imagine it it sort of diminishes the How, power it has yeah. over you right because you sort so of imagine, imagine it and you're like yeah. yeah so you could imagine like falling in a pirouette right. in the middle of the audition and then you sort of practice you see that happening in your head and you're like okay how do I how would I recover from that? And mm. you also see that, oh, you survived that. Right. You know, like it's not the end. That is a really um, good tip. Yeah, right. So, and often then you go into the audition more confident because it's like you've already been through it. You've already mm. been through the worst case scenario. And so it has less power of you. Therefore, yeah. you're less nervous because you actually – um, don't expect it as much because it almost right. seems silly. Your fears are a lot more kind of yeah. lessened. Um, I can definitely see that being very useful. Yeah, so it's a really great practicing tool. So if I feel like if you're someone who massively um, struggles with fear and doubt and just mm -hmm. thinking the worst thing, definitely start putting this into your routine because just 10 minutes a day, three times a week, even just sitting on the edge of your bed mm. and imagining that audition coming up in a month's time and practicing the idea of negative visualization. And then you'll kind of get to the point where the audition's there and feel far less, um, what's the word sort of phased by any yeah. kind of thing that could go wrong because you've been practicing mm. both building up your confidence and also seeing the worst case possible scenario and realizing it's not actually that bad. Yeah. I, so I definitely can see how that also re like when you're thinking of something, what if I fall? What if I, this, it seems so big, but then yeah. when you visualize it, you actually see how, how small it is. If you stumble or fall in a pirouette, it's just, you just get up and then yeah, you continue and it feels much yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, yeah. watching someone, what like as well, just like as an um, older dancer now, whenever yeah. I watch a young person on on stage doing a performance or something, or yeah. in a competition or whatever, and they fall and they have a slip, yeah, do I think less of them? No, no way, not yeah. at all. I'm just like, oh wow, great recovery, like right. That's yeah, a possibility I'm, for you to like actually show how professional you are yeah because yeah. everyone falls everyone falls everyone falls and it doesn't diminish your skill your ability no. um as a dancer at all and getting up and just kind of recovering and even just a little extra flourish at the end yeah I'll be like okay okay cool yeah yeah I felt, so it's, um, yeah yeah go on I was just gonna say that I fell in Varna competition right before my pirouette diagonal I went like, if this is me straight, I went shoop, like that, and then fell boom on my back. Oh, for all of those who are watching the visual and are just listening to it, 
just imagine a person horizontally in the air and smacking <laughs> down on the <laughs> on your tailbone. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. And but, um, um, I think I did a pretty good recovery. My pure yeah. diamond was fine. <laughs> what were you performing? Uh, Corsair, the third variation. Dun, da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Oh my god! So in and that, I, really, I slipped because uh, um, Varna is an outdoor stage, so there had been yeah. the rain that night, and they t- dried it obviously, but there was some slippery spots still. So I was literally just like running to the corner and just fell. So it wasn't even during a step, but oh, okay. Well, that's okay. And then yeah. were you like that? Ah. I was a bit like ah. Oh, I almost said a bad word. Insert yeah. bad word oh, here. Oh, dang it. Oh, darn. <laughs> oh, boulder oh, dash. Burger. Oh, flippity flop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, gosh darn it. Boulder oh, dash. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what I thought. <laughs> yeah, and then you go like this to the audience. <laughs> I think I started the diagonal. I was like, da da da, and then in my head yeah. I thought, "Gosh darn it!" Yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> man, that's unlucky. I mean, but it happens yeah. to everyone. It, it happens, happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. Yeah. And then, also but at that time, had, yeah. At that time, though, did yeah. you feel like, "Oh, that's ruined everything"? Completely. I. It felt like the biggest mistake of my life at the time. It felt like something was like my life would not be the same after this big mistake yeah (laughs) and now looking at it I'm like wow that it literally didn't matter at all yeah it's very it's very hard because as you get older you just yeah I don't know what it is you just have way way more perspective yeah way more perspective and you're like it's not that big a deal I mean I guess when I was younger in primary school, if someone stole a smell pen of mine, you know, did you ever have yeah. those things where like, it's like a smell pen, it smells of like strawberries yes. or something? Oh, like I love those. So if someone stole one of those, my world was just turned upside down. No. Whereas now I don't care what about pens. <laughs> but basically. You know what's the equivalent for me of that in school? I had a really cool pencil case. And then some Oh, girl yeah, had- pencil cases. Oh, we got the same one, and I was like, "You, this. you flippity flop, you flippity flop, <laughs> you flippity flop." I will boulder dash you in the schoolyard. <laughs> <laughs> She's lost it. She's lost it. Too. Um, yeah, meet me outside now. Pencil case. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously though, um, perspective. So that's why as well, guys, look, listen, listen to us who are slightly older than you. Probably most of you, most of you are probably quite young listening to this. I know there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of um, people our age listening to it and older, but mm-hmm. there's definitely a lot of younger dancers listening. And so really try to relax, relax. Yeah. And like, you know, the judges watching won't really care if you fall over, they'll just want you to get up and carry on. And to be honest, I'm always super proud of people if I see them fall and get and get back up. Um, yeah. And then going back to um, auditions, let's say, for example, you get rejected. Let's say mm. you get the letter in the post. You've done um, your big mass audition and you've been told no. And mm. so let's talk about Number one, how we deal with that. Number two, how we move on from it and um, recover. And what our strategy should be to go back again. Like, let's say this particular dancer wants to desperately get to that place that they've been rejected, you know. Mm -hmm. And it happens a lot. There's many dancers who've been rejected and they try again. So. You start us off, Suvi. How would you? You've got a letter in the post. It says, "Sorry, Suvi, we're not accepting you next year. Better luck next time, pal." Jeez, <laughs> how? <laughs> well, <laughs> I wish I got a rejection letter like that. Yeah. Pal. Um, yeah. Well, so I think the first the first things that you 
you hear in your head when you get a letter like that is that that means I'm not good. That means there are so many people who are better than me. That means I'm not talented enough. That means they didn't think that they saw potential in me. So you start narrating the story based on that letter yeah. of, of how talented you are and what your career is going to be like. I can never get to that school. I won't get to the company. I can never dance this role. It, it just, you start telling yourself a story that is based on nothing. Yeah. So I think it's really important to be mindful of that and catch yourself if, if you're going into that kind of cycle <laughs> of negative self-talk. Talk. Um, I think it's important to, if, if that's a school or a company that you really, really want to work and, and be at it in terms of repertoire or or the, the director or something like this or where it's based. Um, I think just looking at your audition process uh, kind of in an honest way, um, really thinking, like, what are my weak points? I, most dancers are very aware of them. And then just focusing on not, oh, I'm so bad at this, but focusing on how do I get better at it? Just yeah. like really looking at it from that side of, well, I, I'm not, I don't think my jumps are very strong and that's probably why they didn't pick me. Yeah. I'm just going to work on that. Something concrete that you can do. And it's great if you can get feedback of what the reason was um, because then mm -hmm. you'll, you'll know better what to, you know, kind of focus on if you want to re-audition. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, rejection hurts obviously it's it's painful because you you put yourself out there and you took a risk and you were really hoping for an outcome that didn't work out so it's natural that you feel hurt it's of course you can feel down for a bit and like you know yeah yeah discouraged that's completely normal but um in the end i've seen so many talented dancers audition at our company who didn't get a contract and it's there's sometimes no logic to it sometimes they just don't like the color of your hair sometimes they think you're too tall you're too short maybe the director just maybe you remind him of his ex-girlfriend who he still loves and it's painful for him to watch you so he doesn't choose you, you never know no. so it's just really important to kind of have a really strong base of like a, a really strong foundation of your sense of self and yeah. like your belief in yourself that is yeah. not kind of wrecked by one rejection. Totally. That's it. Um, <laughs> I would say I totally agree with everything you're saying. And also, you know, like you said, when you get a rejection, you feel like it's, totally personal and completely about you yeah. and if I was to put it very bluntly like yeah you may have to improve there may yeah. be things that you're not quite ready yet you're not quite yeah. ready and instead of crumbling mm -hmm. we've got to especially we need to ask ourselves okay I've been rejected here number one is this what I really want to do and the answer is probably going to be yeah and so if it is yes what am I going to do to um, change the story here and change the situation what action am I going to take to develop my passion and to mm -hmm. develop myself further with my yeah. ballet so yeah. you may have to look at what's got you to this point and look at your situation and be like okay so I know you know and obviously you can ask for feedback but it's unlikely most of the time that yeah. you're going to get any yeah. Um, but you can kind of assess yourself and be like, okay, now I know I got to improve this, or I know I got to improve that. What can I do to develop myself further so that next time I come back stronger? Yeah. And for me, like when I got rejected to the Royal Ballet School, I, yeah, I was devastated, totally devastated, but I was like, okay, I need to get better. I need to yeah. get stronger. So I did, I did things to invest in myself and my training um, mm -hmm. so that, and I worked really hard. So I do things like, and probably you've done similar, you know, you start to get a coach, um, yeah. you know, you get, you get a coach, you, you do stuff on the weekend, you, 
um, watch more ballet videos, or you just, you kind of do things a little bit differently and you give it a bit more effort as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we think we're doing enough and I I knew then when I started to do more that, okay, there's more I could have been doing, you know. Um, And so try to always see a rejection as obviously a lesson and a chance to get better, a chance to grow. And it's not a failing. You haven't failed. You've just slightly fallen. And it's like when you fall, you get back up. And so then you need to find an approach and a way to develop yourself so that you get back up and the likelihood of you falling again will be lessened, you know? Yeah. And also like falling and being rejected and failing is just an inevitable part of life. You can't really. Exactly. Exactly. Life that without yeah. those things that everybody, everybody fails and gets rejected. I at think, some point. yeah. I read a statistic once, which was like success is like 99% failing, like 99% failing. And then you'll get there. And it's basically just about being stubbornly relentless and just keeping on trying, keeping on pushing and keeping on working towards what, what it is you want. Because most people, most people stop, most people quit. And this is the thing, like, this is the dangerous thing as well with auditions is like when you get a rejection from a place you really look up to and you really love, um, it can destroy a lot of people's confidence. And yeah. um, especially because we're so young at the time, um, destroy their dream and esteem to push and try again, you know? Mm. And so, like you said, I think the reminder is it's not personal. Mm, yeah. It could just be they had one spot someone else may have got it that year um and that's not to say you can't try again and also when it comes to like specific places that maybe you've dreamed of always this one school or this one company I think it's important to also keep an open mind because life rarely goes in a way that you plan it even though you've had this one place that you really think you would make a great career there that's not necessarily what's in store for you so it's also you 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 can't know what your experience might be in another school or another company maybe you'd be the teacher or a coach there who's the most wonderful in the world you just you also kind of have I think it's important to keep an open mind in that way and yeah not be so set on like of course it's important to have goals and and um, be aware of where you're auditioning and for what reasons so like really of course research the rep and like and all that stuff but um yeah it's there are so many options yeah more than just one school or one company and also one one thing that I thought about I heard um um an actor say this quote because obviously actors audition all the time and they get rejected all the time and it's really hard to not feel that that's personal but there's one quote that I really like and I think this goes a bit more for auditions to a company rather than a school but um you can't lose a job that you don't have so I think that really helps with the mindset of like I haven't lost anything because I didn't it's I I'm just I'm going into the situation with more of the attitude of this is me this is what I can do would you like it if you don't you don't if you do cool not, you know, like, I'm trying to prove to you I really want you to like me. More like, it's me. I can't change how I'm like um, yeah. right in this situation. <laughs> like, of course, I can improve and all that over time. But right now in this audition, this is me. So yeah. trying to take that attitude of, like, I'm just showing you what I can do. And then mm-hmm. you you decide if you, if you think it's something that you're interested in. Yeah, I think yeah, that really because- helps to make it less, like, uh seem so um what's the word yeah like yeah. it's a big deal but I think yeah. as well you know totally makes sense because we build we build it up in our head so much that sometimes it feels like we have physically lost it yeah because we built it up sometimes you know we go to an audition and we're like this is what I'm gonna do 
I yeah. could I could be in this school, I could live here, look at this wonderful city, this is my life. Yeah. And you feel yeah. like like honestly, I'll tell you something so this is me and it's so ridiculous. I wish I hadn't have done this sort of thing. But like I'm a massive fantasist. So like yeah. like I look up so okay, when I audition for like companies sometime or I thought about auditioning for a company, like sometimes I hadn't even applied yet. Yeah. But I would be like on Google looking at apartments in in the city being like oh I could live there. I could live there. I could have my little kitchen. I could have <laughs> and like yeah and 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 it's like I haven't even gone yet. Yeah. Even, and it's like that's way too much. Like don't do that because then again yeah. you it really feels like you've lost a life, like you've lost yeah. something. Um so I actually think we shouldn't emotionally invest in what it is um, yeah. until much later. Like, I think we should be like, cool, I'm going to go do a class. Let's see how it goes. I lost you. You know, I'm going to try my best, obviously. I'm going to try my best, show them who I am, like you said, be confident. Um, but if we they tell me no, okay, then it's not for me. Yeah. Not for me this year, maybe next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like you said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I think we should, I actually think we should audition for a number of places. And I always say to my students, like, you know, you don't have to actually in the end go, go and do these auditions. Yeah. Init- initially, it's just, it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, initially, it's just an email. Yeah. It's literally sending your stuff initially so like don't worry one step at a time send your stuff see what comes back and then we'll decide where we actually want to go physically audition yeah Yeah. um because again I think it's like oh but I won't get in there or oh but I don't I don't really want to go there it's like yeah yeah Yeah. but it's like let's just send the email one thing at a time yeah you see who responds back you see who's interested then you make you know you look at your budget you look at the rep, what interests you the most, what, you know, all that stuff. And then you make the decision of exactly. are you going to go on audition. So it, it yeah. never hurts to send your stuff, I think. No, I mean, I'm I'm all for sending an email. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's also like, email. literally. Um, and then you may feel surprised. Like when someone yeah. sends you, someone sends you an email right back or soon from a company you didn't necessarily expect. Yeah. And then, but you feel like, oh, you feel different because you sense that, oh, they actually really like me and want me. Yeah. You know, and so that's really important. So, yeah, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And yeah, put them in different baskets. Just find a lot of baskets and a lot of eggs. Just place them all over. Yeah. <laughs> so, Suvi, good. I think we'll leave it there. Yes. Um, if we could close with one final bit of advice for auditions what would you say focus on what you can control a hundred oh fantastic round of that was brilliant that was brilliant focus on what you can control and don't worry about things you can't yeah and just take from the experience learn from the, the experience and any rejection will be a lesson and a opportunity for you to grow and develop your passion. When one door closes, a window opens. Do we climb out of the window or? We <laughs> might. <laughs> we might do. And if there's a big drop, we climb back in and shut it. <laughs> <laughs> we wait for the other door to open it. <laughs> we wait for the other door to open. We, <laughs> yeah. You feel the breeze. No, but actually, yeah, you get, oh. get some fresh air. Get, get some, some fresh air, air, then shut the window. Shut and the then window. shut the window and then you go in your pocket and let's say there's there's a, a huge batch of keys, right? Ooh. Huge batch of keys. I like this one as well. It's like imagine there's a huge batch of keys and only one of these keys will get you through the door. But through the door is your dream. And so it's like you may have to, you may get in after the second try, the second key. It may, you may have to get through 50 keys. But it's like no matter what, keep trying. Keep each trying time. each key and don't stop. And one of these days, your door will open. And that's the main thing. Keep Maybe going. You can save the window. You thought I was. 
then you can say to the window, see you later. But while you're doing that, um, I will say take care of yourself. Like, don't push yourself. Obviously, you have to be healthy. I'm like, you know, keep that. But everyone, you all know that. We're all. Yeah, for obviously. That. And that's why we're doing this, Suvi. That's why we're doing this. We're trying to help people with their mental health as well. And just know you're never alone in the situation. And we're here to help you. Yes. And so should you have any questions or queries, um, this may be on YouTube. So comment down below, you know, your experience with auditions and what you think. And then, <laughs> and then let us know, you know, your experience with auditions or just questions or looking for advice. You know, Suvi's fantastic. So you should um, ask her questions as well. You can find her on Instagram. What's your Instagram again, Suvi? It's um, Susu, Susuvi. So it's Susuvi. Susuvi. That's Susuvi. right. Well, we'll tag you. We'll tag you as well. Yeah. I'll, her Instagram will be down below, everyone. So, Susuvi, it's time. We should dance it out. Thank you okay. so much for listening, everyone. We hope you feel confident and motivated yes. for your auditions. Here we go. Yes. Everybody, you got to dance with us. Here we go. Where's the music? This is me on the audition. Music, I can't hear the music. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm just dancing. I'm doing improvisation. Martha Brown. professional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs>